Hey everyone, it's Beth. And in this month of love, I wanna share with you this word I can't stop thinking about. In fact, I've been telling everyone around me about it. It's this Hebrew word, ahava, which means to love. And I think one of the reasons why I am so captivated by it is because the root word of ahava or to love is this these four little letters, ahav, which means to give. Embedded in this idea of loving is giving, which that makes a lot of sense, right? God so loved the world, he gave us his only son. When, when we're trying to show someone that we love them, we give them, we give them ourself, we give them our listening ear, we give them presence, we give them forgiveness, we give them I mean, all kinds of encouragement. We, we give to them so that they know how it is that we feel about them. Todd and I have been married 25 years and I was thinking about the different things that I have given him. There's a lot of people I love this month, but thinking about him, I, I was remembering a stage in our marriage it, it was more than 15 years ago, but we had a growing family and a growing ministry and we were co-parenting, co-working, co-everything together. And it, it wasn't like anyone was doing anything wrong and we still really did love each other, but our interactions were becoming increasingly transactional. When we were interacting with each other, it was more about what the other person could do for us than it was about the way that we were feeling about each other. And we knew we were headed in a direction that was not in the right, it was not moving in the right way. And I was in the same time frame. I was studying the books, the biblical books of poetry, like Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastics, and Song of Solomon. And I was, I was studying Song of Solomon with some of my friends and we got to the second chapter and there's this verse in chapter two, verse 15 that says, catch the little foxes, the little foxes that wanna come into your vineyard and ruin them while it's in bloom. And I kind of always thought that the right thing to do is to put your best foot forward. And if I had any foxes come into my vineyard to hide them from Todd, I wouldn't want to show him that part. And one night I had this conversation with him and I'm like, what would you do if I told you about foxes that were wanting to come into my vineyard and ruin it? And he's like, I get my bazooka out and I would shoot them. I don't want foxes in your vineyard. And we had this honest conversation that night about the kinds of things that were beginning to kind of get in our vineyard. And some of those foxes were complicated and some of those foxes were pretty innocent. And one of those foxes we realized were, were things like busyness and fatigue. So we made a decision that night that felt really radical at the time. It It's now been our practice for over 15 years, so it doesn't feel so radical to me anymore. But we made the decision that we were going to spend at least two hours a day not co-working and not co-parenting and not co-managing our home, but just exchanging with each other, just interacting with each other, just giving of ourselves to the other. And in the beginning, it was kind of hard. We decided to do it like nine to 11. And most of the, sometimes the kids are in bed, but not all the time. And sometimes they'd knock on the door and they'd want help with homework. And Todd would tell them, you know, you can go to second grade next year. And sometimes the big girls would knock on the door that were living with us in the HOPE program. And they'd, tell, they'd say they needed to talk to me because they broke up with a boyfriend. And Todd would tell them, no worries, you'll be sad tomorrow morning at breakfast still. And we had to work really hard to teach our household this rhythm and certainly to do that for each other. But I can tell you today, those those couple hours every night, those are the deepest breath of my day. That That's the best part of our day. And I can tell you at year 25, I like them a lot better than I liked them at year 20. And year 20, I like them a lot better than I liked them at year 15. And year 15, I definitely liked them better than I liked them at year 10. And I think the reason the relationship has moved in that direction is because we've made the decision to give to each other out of the way that we love one another. And I think that's the idea behind this word. I was talking about this word in a group recently and this man interrupted and said that he had been at a Jewish wedding that year and that the rabbi was teaching them about the word ahava and he said the way that you say it is you hold that last syllable that last syllable as, as long as you can until you literally are out of breath. Like you would say instead of ahava, you'd say ahava. And he said, it's supposed to symbolize that you're supposed to love and give and love and give and love and give until you literally have no more breath in you, till you're breathless. And I think this month, this month of love, that's what I've been trying to be mindful of. Am I loving and giving and loving and giving and demonstrating the love that God first gave me to the people around me until I am literally out of breath?